Sacramento was once named the hottest housing market in the country, but with pandemic restrictions easing and interest rates rising, is the SAC region still seeing record home sales? So we have two experts joining us now live to discuss this. So not just any experts, like the best experts out there, realtor and founder of House Real Estate, Tim Collum, and home appraisal expert, Ryan Lundquist. Gentlemen, it is so good to talk to you tonight. It has been a while. Thanks for joining us. A lot has changed since our last conversation. There was a few things that played a role in our housing market during the pandemic. People were working from home. A lot of the big city centers, people were coming to places like Sacramento. We had low interest rates and people just wanted more space. So Tim, I'll start with you. Give us sort of the state of the housing market. How have things changed? Have they changed? Thanks, Nikki. Um, you wrapped it all up right there. That was pretty darn good. I think um, you hit on every point that's happened. And I will say, um, I we keep coming on. And over the last couple of years, Ryan and I have come to Fox 40 and we keep thinking there's going to be a slowdown. And we really haven't seen it right now. The Sacramento housing market is as hot as ever. Um, we're finding that there's multiple offers. We're seeing that there's even some pendings in the two to three hundred thousand dollar range over asking price when you get above a million dollars. And we're seeing that a lot of people have this fear of missing out and they know the rates are rising. The Fed said that they would have seven incremental um, interest rate hikes. And they find that um, I think most buyers wanna get in before they get to that five to 6% level, which is still relatively low. No cause for huge panic or anything like that. But I think a lot of the buyers these days remember you know, the two to 3% and now since they're getting in that four to five range, people are trying to get in. Yeah, I have to admit, I took advantage of buying a, a condo when, I, when we were in the two range. And the Fed really doing that to sort of flood money into the economy and help with what's, what was going on during the pandemic, Ryan. But um, just to let our viewers know, we were chatting about this over email this morning, preparing for this interview, and you sent just a ton of stats, which you're so wonderful at. And you said there was tremendous price growth so far in 2022. Uh, rocket ship price increases. It's been insane these past two months, especially. Why do you think that is? Well, so first, I think a lot of people looked at this market and they thought there's no way that the most aggressive market ever in 2021 could possibly continue in 2022. But here we are. And I think what's happened is that despite mortgage rate increases, um, buyers have really rushed the market. They're running toward the market. And um, what was interesting to me is that in February, there are actually fewer multiple offers compared to last February at the same time. But what I'm finding is that buyers are actually offering more. And so they're making much more aggressive offers. And so, you know, when you look at the stats, say for March, uh, for instance, so far this month, buyers have offered on average 23,000 over asking. And that's about twice the amount of last March, which was our most aggressive market ever. And so, yeah, I mean, it's been bananas. The median price in the region since January, it's up 60,000. Uh, Sacramento County, it's up just over 30,000. And, and so um, it's been very, very quick. I think, um, you know, it's a good reminder that I don't think anyone predicted the market that we're in right now. Tim, what are you seeing from, you know, the, the realtor perspective when we see, you know, sort of the national averages and trends sort of ebb and flow? I mean, we we have that S word here in California supply. There's a short supply. Right. So it, it, it feels like that doesn't really apply here, right? Right. The inventory is just crazy, Nikki. I would say it's lowest I've ever seen in 22 years. And the I, I'd say that the majority of buyers are extremely frustrated right now. I mean, I think that they see that there's multiple offers and it's not only like Ryan said. I mean, it's just one of those things where it's almost a ballistic market and the um, buyers are much more aggressive than they were a year ago um, with the amount they're putting down. So we're seeing in Sacramento that the inventory is the lowest that I've ever seen and that we've seen in quite some time. Um, and it just continues that. And then that fuels obviously high prices and you know, comps that come out and Ryan will do the appraisals, you know, in the next month and see that, you know, the ones that we have in escrow right now, the majority of them are over asking price um, at house real estate. We have about 42 properties pending right now and um, equaling about 40 million. Our average is about a million. We have some that are 500 and we have some that are 1.5 to 2 million. So every market across the board, as far as pricing and the houses is very busy. And the ones that are in the five to 600,000 range, um, we're seeing, you know, upwards of nine to 
15 offers on those. And so for us, um, it's a, obviously a good opportunity to get in with the rates right now. I think that's what buyers see and then sellers see the prices. And I think they're seeing this final push and none of us have the crystal ball, wish we did. <laughs> Um, we would have invested in plexiglass and all the different wipes and everything else. And I think ultimately um, we right now know that the real estate market is as hot as it can be. And um, I think that the main thing right now is, is that, you know, the question isn't when it's going to come down. Um, it's more or less like, you know, how fast things I'd say can correct themselves or does this go on forever? You know, and also just the, just the, the time frame of, how how long will this remain as aggressive as it is? So, Ryan, in terms of appreciation values, I, I have to admit that, and I know it's not a total accurate snapshot, but I, I check my Zestimate, you know, like once a week. Is what we're seeing in terms of, of homes appreciating in our area, I mean, is is that going to continue at some point? Does, does it level off? You know, that's always a big question. And I think it's the question that nobody knows. Like I said, I mean, nobody predicted the market that we're in. And I mean, predict simple stuff like who's going to win the NCAA tournament this month? <laughs> yeah, or yeah, easy. Who's going to be the president in two years? Or are mom jeans going to be popular next year like they are today? <laughs> I mean, you know, all the basic questions in life. But, um, you know, not to be coy, but I mean, it really is true where, you know, we don't always know you know, what the market's gonna do. I'll say that there's a lot of upward pressure right now. Um, and, you know, we are poised to have a very aggressive spring season, you know, but it's kind of like the X factor we're watching and going, well, you know, at some point there has to be an inflection where buyers look at rates and they look at, you know, gas prices and inflation and utilities and all these things. And a mortgage that today is probably hundreds of dollars more than it was last year. Like there's incentive to buy, of course, but at some point, you know, buyers resist, but but what would that look like exactly? You know, when would it happen? You know, I, I think we're just starting to get some stats. You know, purchase applications nationally are down slightly from where they were. And so is that some resistance? I mean, we'll see. I know conversations I'm having online, people are like, I heard that the market was turning. And I'm like, well, I, we don't have stats to support that. The market is really, really lopsided. It's really imbalanced right now. But, you know, what will happen in the future? I mean, we're just going to have to stay tuned and, uh, you know, watch what happens. But for the immediate you know, time, it's, you know, there, we've had 20 months in a row with not enough supply, we're having about anywhere, about three weeks worth of supply for most of this time when we should have about two months or so worth of listings. I have to say, I didn't predict a mom jeans reference when I was preparing for this interview. So there's that. <laughs> Thanks for that, Ryan. So Tim, when we talked before, a lot of the buyers that we were seeing here in Sacramento that were coming here, they were coming from the Bay Area. Is that your experience? Still? Yeah, it, it's still happening, Nikki. Um, we're seeing a lot of Bay Area buyers come. Um, we're seeing a lot of movement from other areas. Um, they did say Sacramento was one of the top destinations from the Bay Area. And I think there's a lot of companies that are still saying, you know, we're working from home and this is the case. So I think that overall, Sacramento is really in a good position. And, you know, the agents that I talked to down in the Bay Area, they said it's as busy as ever and Los Angeles as well. So, you know, this will continue for, for a little bit for sure. Um, we don't see a huge fall off. And if you do look at the national headlines, it's kind of a mixed bag of things. And, um, you know, what we'd find is a lot of the people too are finding that they are making moves just because of the interest rates. And, you know, there's different headlines that are kind of everywhere, but the majority of our buyers, um, I would say half of them right now are from the Bay Area. And then you have people that are moving in Sacramento and doing whatever they possibly um, can. And then, you know, really we're seeing this all across the country. So there hasn't been any huge headlines. And I think, um, and I'm not going to predict anything, but I think in the next month or two months, you'll see some record prices all over Sacramento just because of the activity. And Ryan will be the one that's appraising all of them saying, oh my gosh, so we might have a couple more months of this momentum that we're seeing. So um, overall, Sacramento is doing very well. I do think that it'll continue. And um, a lot of people are in that race to try and get the best property for the interest rate as it changes. All right. So that being said, I, I want to break this down. Buyer versus seller. We're going to start with buyer. Tim, I'm going to stick with you and then I'll sure. bounce over to Ryan. But, you know, when, when you feel like you're in a race against time, when is it, you know, what's the next interest rate hike going to look like? I got to do something right now. We talked about this yep. before, too, where people are waiving appraisals. I know you don't want to hear yes. that, right? <laughs> and they're sort of, yeah. you know, waiving all these contingencies. I mean, are you still seeing that? And what advice would you give to a buyer right now? I mean, is, is it is now the time? 
Yeah, I think that I'd say be careful. I think that's the first thing. I think people are waiving inspection contingencies. And for sure, Nikki, they are waiving appraisal contingencies. And Ryan and I have discussed that over the, the years. And I think what we're finding is, is that people are throwing out those prices. And when you get into waiving things fast and not doing your proper inspections, it is a market that you want to be wary of. And we're seeing um, an aggressiveness like the Bay Area. And I think for buyers, I think it's important to do your due diligence, hire a real estate agent that knows the area, the local market, understands the comps, and you're not just throwing out numbers. But I do think it's a really good opportunity to still get in at a relatively low interest rate. And I think as far as buyers are concerned right now, um, they are taking those proper steps to try and waive some things. And today I actually got a, a, a buyer um, that called and they said, you know, we need to know about this offer. We need to know what time it's going to be accepted. We need it by three o'clock because we don't want the interest rates to ra rise wow. anymore. And I haven't had anyone say that to me in the last three to four years. They need it hour by hour. So we're finding that people are just in that mode. And but I do think that there is an opportunity, especially over the next three months to, to buy a property and get in a good interest rate. Yeah, Ryan, that fear of missing out, that FOMO can sometimes cloud your judgment. Definitely. Yeah. And I, I think buyers, they, they have to act quickly. Um, half the pendings right now are getting into contract in seven days or fewer. And so, um, but I kind of to uh, piggyback on what Tim said, I mean, I'd say be really careful about not making a rash decision. Um, I find that you're going to have to be patient. Also, it's sort of like dating where um, you're going to have to go on lots of dates before you find the person you marry. Um, probably not the first date. And so I'd just say, hang in there. Um, but realize too that finance offers are actually winning okay 85 percent of the market last year was finance and i think when people hear that stat they think no way because you know 85 percent of the market is all cash but it's actually financed and so there is hope for uh getting an offer accepted of course the one asterisk is that you know you might have to pay cash above appraised value and so it's almost like you have to look at the market and say what is this property worth and what might i have to bring to the table also that very difficult to um you know, to figure out what you need to do to get an accepted offer. So there's no such thing as love at first sight when you're purchasing a home <laughs> is my takeaway from that. Okay, and let's talk about this from the seller's perspective. And Ryan, I'll, I'll start with you. What advice do you have for sellers in this market? So I'd say first, uh, don't be greedy because recognize that you might be a buyer soon after. And so don't do to others what you would have them do to yourself. You know, isn't that the golden rule? Yeah. And so, um, but I'd say price reasonably and see what the market gives you. I find sometimes sellers are thinking, I've, the only thing I've been hearing about is hot headlines. And, you know, Tim just said this, here's an example of going 300K over list and look, price reasonably and see where the market takes you is the best bit of advice I can give. Um, but um, I just say that, um, you know, just be ready for buyers um, to negotiate with them, work with them, um, you know, and just, just remember that it's a stressful process. Make it as easy as you can. That would be my advice. All right. ABCs of selling. Tim, you're up. I would say the same thing. I piggyback Ryan off of Ryan. And um, we always say price it just below what the market dictates with all the comps and let the market speak to you. And we're having great success with that. And we're finding that majority of our listings are going into escrow above asking. But again, the greed factor is there. And it's 100% true, Nikki. I would say that a lot of these sellers too, they're, they're bummed when they get only $100,000 over the asking. And I look at them and I'm like, oh man, remember the days of full price and that was a great time. Um, but now, I think the one thing is, is that you just know that this won't last forever. I, I really, truly believe that. And I think that as far as a seller is concerned, price your home right. Um, look for the red flags. Not everyone is who they say they are. They submit multiple offers all over the place. Um, and you have a lot of people that are buying properties, sometimes sight unseen. Um, so I think that you want to be careful. And again, you know, caution, caution right now. And sometimes, you know, some of these prices that surprise all of us, I think, the main thing right now is to, you know, uh, do a good job investigating your buyers when you are selling your property. Make sure your agent does their homework. Make sure that they call the banks. Make sure, like Ryan said, they're not all cash. They're 85 percent financed. And I think that's a good statistic to know. And right now, um, the main thing is just market the property and do your best and obviously have a reasonable expectation and you'll do all. Everyone will do great.
Wait, didn't Gordon Gecko say greed is good? We have all kinds of references happening during this. We during can go this, all, this yes, for sure. Okay, before for we wrap sure. here, Ryan, I want to ask you about rent prices because I saw a tweet from you. I, I, it might have been a couple of weeks ago. Uh, you said, I have to buy a home because I can't afford the rent. I mean, rent prices in Sacramento, they're high right now. Yeah, and that was a sobering um, example from, from someone who said, you know, I would sell, but I can't afford the rent. And I think it just speaks to how aggressive the rental market has been. And I think for anyone who hasn't looked at rents lately, I mean, jump on Craigslist or, you know, whatever source you want, and it's it's tough. There's not a lot of listings and, you know, they really are going uh, for quite a bit. It's sort of, I, I think we forget sometimes that the rental market feels just the same um, as the, the resale market. And, you know, one quick stat on rents, uh, Yardy Matrix put out a stat in December. They said that for every listing, Sacramento has about 23 applicants. And that's for apartments but it's really about the same for the single family world also and so it just shows that you know we have this imbalance in the rental market that's i think driving people to make real estate decisions and people sort of in the trenches there also in, in the struggle all right ryan lundquist tim Collum, we are out of time unfortunately guys but the good news is, is we can always have you back so appreciate your sharing your expertise on this crazy market and how, we'll hope to have you back soon thanks thank you so Mickey. thanks ryan Thanks, Jess.